On June 23rd of 1972, water broke through the Susquehanna levee system. The result is what we know as Agnes, the flood, as many call it still today. I am pleased to be joined by a man who not only lived through this, but had to report on it as well. One of our area's finest renowned journalists, David DeCosmo, now retired television journalist, but very well known for his work in radio and television over the years. David, you were working at the time, so tell us where you were working and what it was like when Agnes hit. Well, Lisa, I was at WILK Radio. I was the news director there, but we were the emergency station. We had a two-way radio at the Luzerne County Courthouse. And I decided rather than bother them constantly with telephone calls, I would go over and call back reports on the two-way radio. This was as the river was threatening. Uh, as it happens, the one person who didn't show up for a civil defense was the public information officer. And I was drafted in that position. My boss at WILK, the late Roy Morgan, okayed it. Uh, and so I fed back reports constantly from civil defense headquarters. Now, that headquarters was in the sub-basement of the Luzerne County Courthouse. Not the basement, the sub-basement. And uh, consequently, it eventually got flood water coming in. Actually saw the water coming up through a drain in the floor. But I was able to establish uh, a radio network of 13 area radio stations who, to an hour, gave flood-related information. And because that network was formed, radio was called the hero of the hour. And I must tell you, that network would not have been formed were it not for a Hazleton broadcaster, Ron Gilinardo, Ron Jay, who's at WAZL. I remember Ron, Ron Jay. I worked with him at WAZL. Wonderful man. He helped me get into the business. And Ron told me if we gave him permission to carry our signal on his airway, he would retransmit our broadcast. That's what gave me the idea to set up the network. And that network saved a lot of lives. Dave, that must have been like an emotional roller coaster because you're doing your job as a journalist, which is tough, but you're seeing the area that you love and live in and report on being flooded. So what was going through your mind at the time? Well, remember that for a time, we thought we could stop the flood. We called for 10,000 volunteers to put sandbags on the levee system. We got them. But unfortunately, on this day, 50 years ago, the river watcher, Nick Suchak, got a report from Tawanda. And we knew if the river was at a certain level at Tawanda, that we couldn't avoid the flood in Wyoming Valley. And that is the point, roughly 11 o'clock in the morning, when uh, General Fa Frank Townen, who commanded civil defense, said, David, we're going to sound the siren. We're going to evacuate first the people manning the levee system sandbags and then the entire community. And that is when I said those infamous words, get out, get out now. And of course, the devastation was tremendous. Uh, there were some uh, 60,000 homes affected in our general immediate area. And yet, Lisa, I must tell you this. We were the hardest hit area. Uh, 120 lives lost in Pennsylvania because of Agnes. Three deaths in our area and two of them were rescue workers. The lessons learned, if you're told to get out, get out, because if you don't, someone has to put their life on the line to try and rescue you. And many people were rescued by boats and by helicopters from their rooftops. The other suggestion, keep your valuable wedding album and personal photos close at hand, because the one thing that I heard for months and months after the flood was we could rebuild our home we couldn't get the wedding album back. So now we see the documentaries that have made around this 50th anniversary. I talked with Alan Stout about the one uh, that is uh, showing today at the FM Kirby Center. Uh, it's sold out and there's two more showings on the 29th. And you said there's another one on WVIA today as well. And you are part of both. Along with about uh, 50 interviews that I have done, but it's important to remember and more important than remembering Agnes it's important to learn from it. Those 13 radio stations I told you about that kept everybody informed, they don't exist anymore. There's only a few. So today, were you to have uh, an emergency, you would probably get an alert on your cell phone. 
But that would be like an Amber Alert. They could tell you something is happening. When it comes to specific information to tell Joe that his wife is safe on the other side of the river, our cell phones aren't designed to do that in terms of a wide variety of notifying people. Something's going to be done. I'll be talking with the FEMA uh, emergency management workers across the country uh, very shortly. And I expect they're going to come up with some ideas for how to keep people informed in lieu of those radio stations that just aren't there anymore. Today's news feature is brought to you by Falvello Law Firm. Have you been injured in a car accident? Call Falvello Law Firm. Your case is our fight. 